Hello everyone, welcome to a new episode of Harry Builds an App in September React Native Edition part number four. Fourth episode, how exciting. So last episode I got you up to speed on the roadmap on what the application is going to be comprised of. And I have this lovely little roadmap that we uh, wrote together. Where did I put that roadmap? Over here. Uh, what I did offline, just to not waste your time, is I actually copy that and paste that into the README document. So you actually can see that on the repo now. If you go down here, you can see that roadmap is right here for you to follow along with me. But today's episode is not about the roadmap. Today's episode is about me being naughty and doing some coding without you to watch. So today's episode is me getting you up to speed on all the things that I've done without you knowing about. With that being said, let's get on with catching you up to speed. If I'm gonna go to the commits here, you can see the last where we left off in terms of code was me adding TypeScript support. And you can see that I've been a little bit of a busy bee. I have a bunch of commits all the way around here where I've done some initial work. So I've jumped into a comparison view on GitHub to actually walk you through the changes that I've made so that we actually are seeing eye to eye again. Uh, the first thing that I did without you because I've never used it before is I actually added a project called React Navigation. And React Navigation from my Googling seems to be the de facto navigation solution for React Native. There are others, however, this one seems to be the most mature, polished, and widely adopted. I've never used it before, so I wanted to get myself up to speed because, again, if I had not read ahead of time, that would have consisted a lot of me going like this. Not that much fun. But what React Navigation allowed me to do is actually have this, these navigations where I can open a modal, close a modal, click into an item, go back to an item. So there's that, where if I jump into that commit, you can see it was me doing additions to package.json to actually add in React Navigation and also adding the types for it as well. But let's just jump straight to the code itself because I think that's gonna be the most interesting part about it. Um, we talked about last time how TypeScript and React Native with Expo don't play the nicest, so I have simply a root-level app, which is just simply exporting the router component. And the router component is where much of the work with React Navigation was done. So if I uh, command click into that through the uh, love, the support of IntelliSense and VS Code, I can jump straight into that file, which is in router.tsx. Let me enhance this a little bit for you. Actually, let me keep that open so I know that you can't see down there. In this file, there's a lot of things happening. Uh, here we're actually creating a stack navigator. Uh, React Navigation has many ways of creating uh, navigators. There's a stack navigator. There is also a uh, switch navigator, a drawer navigator, a tab navigator. If you use a native application before, these should sound familiar to you. And tab navigators, if you have those tabs at the bottom of the screen that you're switching before, look at that. Tab navigator is deprecated. That's good. But all the other things are similar to that. A stack navigator is the navigator that allows you to have this kind of top area where you can like push things onto a stack, hence the stack navigator term. And the way you actually create a stack navigator is you give it a configuration object. So if I actually went into the documentations, uh, I give it route configs, where for each key, each key is a screen that the stack navigator can navigate to. And then the value of that key, the object, has information about how to configure that screen. So in this case, screen uh, can be, screen is a key which says what React component to render. Path is what we're actually going to be using for deep linking later in future episodes. And navigation options, uh, I don't really care about. Uh, there's a shorthand also, if I don't want to actually configure the um, path at all, I can just use the simple uh, direct access. And because I'm having fun with TypeScript, I actually made a enum, which was very exciting for me. I made a string enum where uh, I have all the possible strings that exist and then just the string representation of them. So that when I actually say, uh, for the stack navigator, I have uh, main, which is my main stack navigator. Then I also have the create project navigator, which is the create the add project screen. This has a second option which allows you to actually set the stack navigator config options, which is over here. 
Uh, for this mode, uh, what's also cool about when you call create stack navigator is it returns back a React component essentially, which means that you can kind of nest stack navigators. And when reading the documentation, it said that to make a modal, you actually have to have a root stack navigator that handles the modals that you can kind of nest navigators inside of that to be able to have the general iOS flow or Android flow of things. So this is my root stack navigator where the mode is modal. And here is how I'm actually able to add the project screen there. But in the actual main, which is the main part of the application, I have two screens, which is the uh, project list screen, uh, which actually I can rename that to be uh, project list screen. Uh, and then this one, I'm gonna rename this back to create project screen because those names were weird. But I have the project list and the project screen. So if I go here and click here, this is the project screen. I can pop back off to the project list screen, hit the plus, it's showing in modal, and this is the create project screen. So this is kind of the, as simple as it is for the navigator, but it took me a lot of reading and experimenting to get here. So do not be uh, misled by the terseness of this because the amount of hours that went into actually understanding this and making this was more than meets the eye. Next thing I want to talk about is the project list screen. Uh, I'm adding the suffix of screen to every full page screen as a way for me to designate if it's a full page screen or not, or a sub component. I do the same thing on my DOM applications where if there is a page, I call it projects page or create page to designate that that is a routable component of my application, just as it is the same true for here as well. Um, in this project list screen, this is the application that runs what you see on the left here. Uh, to prove it, I'm gonna I always like to prove things. I don't know why. Uh, the other projects here, I'm gonna say, I have proved it. I'll save that, it'll auto refresh. And I have proved it. I don't know why I always feel like I have to prove things. I got using TypeScript, so don't be confused by all these extra fancy things. But starting from the top, React Naviga Navigator lets you actually configure uh, how things behave. And what you see here is, uh, let's get rid of these uh, TypeScript things to make it a little bit more legible. So this is what it looks like if it had no TypeScript, where essentially this is a function, which I'm destructuring off the navigation property. And what I'm returning here is an object. And these are just annotations so I know what types they are. This is for, this is telling me what is actually inside of there, which is kind of neat. So I can say, oh, the navigation screen props has the navigation uh, property in there. So I can click into this, navigation props, and then I'm just command clicking on things. That's how my VS Code is set up. And what is the option that I'm using? I'm using navigation. So I can click here, uh, navigation screen props. So I can see all the things that are combined in there. So again, this is just TypeScript stuff. What I return from this object is the title on the screen, then also I can figure what the uh, header right should be here. In this case, I'm using Touchable Opacity, which is a React Native component that lets you actually have a item be touchable and then change the opacity of it once it is touched. I have an icon, the plus icon, great. I made this uh, on Press Handler private because I wanted to be fancy and use TypeScript features. And then here I have the render function where I have a root level view item. Uh, I realize that I don't know if I ever gave a high level overview about what React Native is. Um, maybe I should do that in the next episode just so people aren't completely lost because um, there's not much different than React, it's just components, but these components are essentially built into the React Native framework that, you know, instead of using div, you use view. And that's kind of all that you really need to know. They are just being imported from React Native's project itself and just co it just comes built in with many components out of the box. I'm just gonna do this now, because I figure why not. So these are all the components you have to use. There's no like DOM components. That's all the components you have to use is from React Native. And they try to provide as many primitives as possible. The most primitive one is view, which is essentially a div. Um, but you have to use the React Native components because that's what allows for you to make that bridge from React Native in JavaScript to React Native in Native. That's all, they're just components. Doesn't matter. And just like React, I have a render function. I'm rendering a flat list component, which is a way of making a list item. Uh, I have an item separator component, which helps me say that it's me have this bar, super, then every item. I have a project list item that lets me render the contents in there. 
And then also in React Native, what's kind of neat is that it's all uh, inline styles, well not inline styles, but it's CSS and JavaScript where you actually have uh, the styles right here because it has to know how to lay it out natively. So it's similar to the camel case version of CSS properties, so hence background color, not background color has to be like any dash, the next letter becomes capitalized. That's all that really it means. And that's kind of the project list screen. Um, where is this on press being used? Um, over here, or on press here. So this is on the top right, when you say on press, I'm taking the navigation, which is similar to React Router, we are given kind of the history object. I can navigate to the create project screen. And so that's what happens when I hit on press here. I go to the create project screen. So if I actually go to the create project, let's take a look at that. This one's a little bit more straightforward, a little more styling. I was just trying to get the styling out of the way because that doesn't really matter to you as much, but I have uh, the add project screen, which looks like I'm not using that. So that's great. So I can just kind of uh, delete all of this. This is why you should always have someone review your codes to make sure that you're actually doing things correctly. Save that. Let's open that back up. Looks great. Um, I'm using this thing called Safe View Area, which is, is it in here? Yeah. So this is a React Native thing that essentially makes it easier for React Native to work with iPhone X. And it'll essentially it'll wrap your top level view so that it shows it applies the padding to reflect the portion of the view that is not covered by things. So for iPhone 10, that's what I need it for. And then I have the extra the content inside, which is me just doing layouts. So I have, you know, the, the outside, uh, I have the left view, the content, which is the top area, the footer, which is the buttons at the bottom, where you can hit the uh, cancel, which says navigation go back. You can do the uh, on create like that alert project created, then go back. I haven't done that yet, so I don't really have uh, blah, 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 hit create, project created, but we haven't actually implemented that yet. That's in the next episode. And then you can go into the uh, project, where is it? This is the project screen. I can go into the uh, project list item. This is just each one, each, each individual row, which again is just code you can look at in your own time. Uh, if there's the last photo taken, if there is no last photo taken, show the uh, user O. If there is, we'll show the actual uh, URL. So let's, actually, let's just change that just to see what it could look like if I actually had a photo taken for that project. So it'll actually show the photo there preview, which is nice, but this is me just putting some dummy data in there for now. And then in here, I'm saying on press, I want to actually go to the uh, project screen, which is the project screen. And this is the one that will actually spend a uh, most of our time here. And project screen. Okay, that was it. That was the catch up. Uh, hopefully you feel up to speed. Hopefully it wasn't too boring. Let's get me to rattle on. But uh, I wanted to get, make sure that I knew what the heck I was talking about. So apologies for not doing that with you, but sorry. If you're not already a subscriber, do subscribe. More videos coming at you every week. I'm here talking to your face. Make sure your face looks good. See you again next episode.